We are thrilled today, I am particularly thrilled, to have Susan Isaacs with us here at 100 Huntley. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. It's good to be here. How are you? Um, I'm good. I, I'm I didn't good. mean that literally. You don't have to answer every question. Okay. I'm a little dry mouth, but you, I think um, it's just being in your presence. You are, uh, it's very tough. I was trying to think, how do I sum you up for this audience? Mm -hmm. But because you wrote a book that I have been raving about since it came out, what, like Thank two you. years ago, year and a half and ago, The whatever. check, I will send you the The, the title of the book, I think we may have a copy in studio. Hold on. Yeah, here it is. It's called Angry Conversations with God. I've been telling all my friends everywhere I go, but you know, people always say thank you, but thank you for what? It's pure selfishness. I want my friends to read a great book. So, but this book, describe what it is, because this is yes. not easy. Okay, it's called Angry Conversations with God. A snarky but authentic spiritual memoir. A snarky, okay, Angry Conversations with God. So please tell us and the viewers at home what this book is about, Angry yes. Conversations. Why are they Angry Conversations? Well. I had a, I was successful pursuing what I felt was my calling, you know, writing and performing in comedy and television and film. And I got to a place in my life where everything bad happened at once. Now, mind you, these are middle class white girls problems, but I was a middle class white girl, so I was dealing with that. Um, in a short order, my father died, my mother had a stroke, um, my acting career went completely south. Um, while all my friends got their big breaks, like friends with you know national television commercials, landed big TV show deals, and also at the you same mentioned time, any, anybody specifically that you particularly hated at that time? Um, Somebody we'd recognize, maybe. Um, no, but they did <laughs> play a particularly OCD care. I mean, you're happy for them, right? No, I but you're like, why not me, God? Right, you know, and I mean, and plus it was like everybody who, that was at arm's length all got successful all at once, just as, as everything fell out. And then all of my, my four best friends got married that summer. Meanwhile, the guy I was dating for three years, we just broke up. It all happened at once. And then um, I had come back from Los Angeles, back to New York. I had been helping my mother, who had had a stroke. And a friend of mine said, I know things are tough. One of my friends from church who was trying to lay on the church, you know, I just want right. to you know, come and be Jesus to right. you. Right doing one of those things, and <clears throat> I'm like, okay, fine. And she took me for a walk in Central Park, and just as I was starting to feel like, you know, the sun is still shining, and kids are still playing, and life is still going on, and I'm gonna go you on. Finally got to that moment. Finally got to that moment, like, okay, I have a future. Right. And who would walk by, un did not see me, but my newly ex-boyfriend with his new girlfriend? In a city that I, didn't even live in anymore. And I thought, that was not random. That was, a, that was just God just going boom, right. hitting me. And It makes you feel like God is cruel. It, well, because he was. Right. There was a purpose behind it, which I saw much later. But at the time, my friend said, well, praise the Lord. God is just showing you that Jack's moved on. I mean, those words like, Came so wait, out this, of her mouth. I, like I'm like, could right. you please pull them back in? Is this the friend you hit? Yes. Um, the lawsuit was dropped. Right. Because right. when the jury heard what she, she had said, it coming. they she wanted had it to coming. Her. Right. Um, well, what that did was, I felt like God had completely orchestrated it. And this is after. But that is bizarre. I mean, I just have to say that is amazing. I forgot that that's in the book. You tell that story. Amazing. But that, that is truly not the word. That's that's. I that would is, say that is incredible and bizarre. It's but bizarre. to play the role of the churchy Pollyanna, let me fix everything. I can say that if that hadn't happened, you wouldn't have written this amazing yeah. book. And it Which, almost would have been worth it. Right, exactly. Um, no, but what happened was, is that started this thing in me where I thought, God is cruel. Yeah. All these things that I thought that he was orchestrating my yeah. life for good yeah. and everything. It was like whack-a-mole. He just yeah. hit down all the moles and they never came well, back no, up. We, jo we joke around, or I joke around, but this, I know, this is so serious. I, I knew you during this time. Yes, and you did. This was, this was dark. This was dark. Painful. Very, very dark. Yeah. Very, very dark. Yeah. I stopped eating. I just, um, you know, I starved down to a size one, and I, I don't know. I didn't even want to live to enjoy the clothes. It was that bad, wow. you know. But this is what happened. That's it's, bad. It was very bad. Yeah. It started this process where, aside from professional, personal, family things falling apart, yeah. 
my faith started to fall apart because I started to wonder if I ever heard God, if I had, a, if, if he was ever involved. And that cascaded a larger problem. Right. And from there I went to see a therapist, um, a Christian therapist, and I realized this is the fundamental, oh, I left out this part, this same churchy friend in trying to, you know, fix me, right. wanted to send me a book, and right. I, you know. By the way, I'm not this friend, right? Well, I made her a she, so it would oh, kind good. of disguise who you were. Because I don't want people to know. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, no, she said, she wanted me to read this book, so I said, this will change your life. It says that your relationship with God is like a marriage. And I thought, well, then God and I need to go to marriage counseling. Um, but I started thinking about it. Um, what if I could get God in a room and talk to him? What would I ask him? You know, like, is this my best life now? Is that what this is? And I actually took it to heart and I went to see a therapist and I thought the fundamental relationship in my life, because I was single, was my relationship with God. And this therapist made me vocalize what my God sounded like. And let me tell you, that guy was a jerk. <laughs> he was like, really? I've got to sit here and talk to you and your problem. Yeah, he of course he spoke with a British That's accent. actually the Zoroastrian totally God. Yes, very much. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was. So you began to work. You this worked out. Zoroaster into a I sentence. I tried. That's why That's I'm here. That's amazing. That's why I'm here. That's amazing. So, but you, okay, so, so you hit the bottom. Hit the bottom. And you go to counseling. When did you begin to think that you might work this into a book? Well, um, I started writing in order to stay sane, in order to process my grief. Mm. Um, at the same time, I started seeing a therapist, and I should mention what one thing that was very good about that was when I vocalized and heard what God had s sounded like, right. I realized that my fundamental image of God was warped and distorted, and that that God did need to change. I needed to I needed to completely overhaul my image of God. Okay, the re the reason that for two years I keep saying that I, I think so much of your book is because. I, it's my opinion, as I was reading your book, that there's so many people who suffer from this issue. In other words, they are yeah. angry at some God who's not actually God. But they don't some realize it. Made up, yeah. you know. Yeah. And th that's exactly what your book gets to. Yeah. And so, how did you work through this? How did you. Yeah. Well, I think the process of writing, and I worked in a completely, you know, non religious writers group, and I was really fascinated how people were so anxious to know the story. I had to write in order to process the grief. Yeah. But I am a comedian, so I found a way to find the humor in it. Yeah. Um, and in the process of writing it, it the, the, the book has two threads. The thread is me going to counseling and right. working through that kind of jerky, you know, BBC God, and then retelling the story of my spiritual journey because right. I, from the moment I could memorize the Apostles' Creed, I read it and I knew it was true. Right. And I, I went to a lot of different churches, like, you know, grew up Lutheran, uh, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Episcopalian. You can have um, to pick a one because it's a short segment. Okay. Okay, but seriously, when I read the book, I kept thinking that what, what, what amazed me was the authenticity, Thank right? You. It's not a religious book. It's a book for every, everybody who's kind of going through some Everyone has some connection to God or the divine. And whether we realize it or not, yeah. we have some concept of why am I here on this planet? Yeah. What am I made to do? What makes me alive? If there is a God, what, what, how can I be my true self? Which is like, you know, St. Irenaeus, Irenaeus said, I worked St. Irenaeus. I was going to say, how do you I do want, that? I'm very happy about Go that. ahead. Saint I'm going to work Irene in polycarp in the next segment. Go ahead. Oh, I'm so, can I say What did St. Irenaeus say? St. Irenaeus said that the glory of God is man fully alive. Mm -hmm. So we all want to feel fully alive. And in the writing of that book, I think people came along and understood because we all have that fundamental desire to feel like that we're in life and we're here on the planet doing at least part of what we're meant to do. Right. And I wanted the book to have a sense of being inclusive to anybody. Yeah. Well, it, it is. That's why, I mean, I'm such a fan of it. But I also, the thing is, I, 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 um, I describe the book as one woman's search uh, for God and man, because you're looking for a husband. Yes. And I said, not necessarily in that order. Yeah. Because I thought, that's the funny thing. Like, part of this, you're going to all these different churches, but you're also wondering, okay, God, where is the man? Yeah. Where is my husband? And, and the fact that that seems to have had a happy ending, maybe you should say something about that. Well, you know, I should say that 
the man, I'm, I mean, I don't want to do that thing of like, you know, Jesus is your boyfriend, but um, he, Jesus is not your boyfriend, okay? Right. Um, he's not going to pick up dinner. I found that out. Uh, but that your the ultimate love relationship, the ultimate romantic relationship, romance in terms of the, the old literary term, that is the big journey that we're on. The God thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the most important things that I learned in my book before the happy ending um, was that I had to love God for who he was and not what I could get out of him. And I had to come to terms with life on life's terms right. because I had really was telling God how he should run things. And um, guys hate that. Yeah, right. I did find that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there was a certain amount of coming to love life for fun and for free mm -hmm. and to realize that um, God wanted to give me what I needed, not what I wanted right. or what I was dictating to right. him. And when I came to feel gratitude for the things that I did have in my life and come to terms with the sorrow, not to say it's all okay and it's all going to work out, but there is still grief and sorrow and things that we do have to let go of. And that's the worst thing when someone in church goes, you know, it's just meant to be. I mean, right. tell that to someone who just lost a, a right. child to cancer. The Holocaust is just meant to be. It's, it's fine. It's yeah. all fine. God it's needs not. people. Yeah. No, when people say that, that yeah. I guess, again, this is why I love your book so much, because it, it, it basically blows through that nonsense. And that yeah. nonsense is so offensive. I mean, I imagine whoever's watching this program, whoever reads your book, it resonates because they say, I have lived that. I have, I have, heard, I've gone through tough stuff and I've had some religious person give me this band-aid, which is just so shallow. Right. They don't, they're not willing to, to feel my pain. They just right. want to like make it okay. And, and yeah. the fact that your whole book is about not doing that. And, and the idea that you ultimately do come to terms with God is totally different than I thought he was. Yeah. And that you do find a husband. Yeah. Are you guys still together? As of this morning, You're yes. Still, oh, I'm yeah. so glad. Um, but it, I did. It's so it's mm. amazing. It's amazing. I mean, look, it's very rare that you pick up a book like this that has an actual happy ending that's not fiction. Yeah. And I do want to say this, too, that when you, when I read the book, because I'm a writer, I thought this is gonna be really tough to pull off. I did not think you'd be able to pull it off. I said, this is such a high degree difficulty dive that three quarters of the way through, it's gonna to have to fall apart and you're gonna to have to fudge it. As many mm -hmm. authors do in books, they can't kind of keep it going. You pulled it off Thank on you. an artistic level. Thank you. Um, and, and somehow made it work. Really, it's, it's virtuous. So I'm not just here to praise you. I mean, I, I mean every word. And I kept thinking, this is a book that every American woman mm -hmm. I know would love this book, but they probably don't know it exists because you're not, I don't know, Sandra Bullock or somebody right. who's going to pitch it on the chat shows. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Matakis. Um, thank you. Well, thank you very much. I think the thing that people need, one of the big aha moments for me was realizing that God grieved along with me mm -hmm. and was sad for me too. He was sad at the losses that I had in right. my life. That he wasn't like, you know, you just need to get over it or you should, you know, wasn't wagging his finger. Um, it's a lot more difficult to deal, to sit with. It's like Frederick Buechner said, um, here's the world, beautiful and terrible things will happen. And that's the reality is that God does not call us into a life that's safe. Being in a relationship or having faith right. in God doesn't mean that we are um, omitted from grief or trials or, or anything. I mean, look at Jesus. Hello. I mean, all of, all of the great men in store, all it, the people yes, in great it's, stories it's reality. go through hell. Right. And that's the reality right. is that's how God grows us up. Okay. So since we only have a couple seconds left, okay. I got really excited when I found out you were doing a one woman yes. show of angry conversations mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna keep doing that? What's going I on? I am gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna remount it in LA, um, probably do it once a week and build in some more production value. I do wanna take it on tour and I do wanna make a DVD out of it. Okay. But it's um, a one woman show based on the book, lots of jokes. Are you the one woman? No, I, I hired you it hired out. some chick? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, she has Susan, to read off of like cue cards, which is really annoying. I know. So I think I may have fire her and have to step in. Well, let me tell you something. I'm so thrilled uh, mm -hmm. that you could be my guest here. I yeah. hope, I hope folks, people, I mean, look, when I'm passionate about something, I don't care. I really hope lots of people will buy this book because they will like it. They will find it entertaining. And it'll, it speaks to people in that place 
that I feel like almost no books ever do. So congratulations on Thank a you. great book. I hope the One Woman Show goes well. Thank you for being with us. Come back soon. I will. And we'll be right back.